welcome back. Uh, we are discussing about measurement of resistance and the theme of this chapter is primarily the fact that measurement of low and means very low and very high resistance is uh, not that easy. We need pre, uh, special precautions uh, while doing that. So, in this video we will see uh, what are the problems that we may encounter if we want to measure a small resistance with a Wheatstone bridge. And what is the remedy? The remedy is called uh, Kelvin's double bridge. We will also see the uh, principle of Kelvin's double bridge. Okay. So, let us begin. Suppose I have uh, a Wheatstone bridge with which I want to measure a small resistance. Uh, so, the title uh, is measurement of low resistance with a bridge. So, itself as the Wheatstone bridge. Now, so one among these four resistances definitely is the unknown one which you want to measure. Say this is the unknown resistance, call it R, R x, x for unknown. So, this is the unknown resistance and all other resistances are known, call them P, Q, R and S. Okay. So, let us write P, Q, S are known, R x, x for unknown is unknown and uh, R x is a low resistance. Okay. Now, if R x is a low resistance, then uh, we, we, we may need uh, possibly another resistance which is small. Okay. Uh, why? Because at balance, um, we will have R x is equal to P by Q multiplied by S and we will run into problem if any resistance is small. So, we can choose possibly say P and Q to be of higher or medium value. Okay. So, we may choose. So, if we choose P and Q to have medium value, because medium value resistances are easy to deal with. Because contact resistance, terminal resistance are uh, negligible compared to the act, compared to the uh, main resistance itself. So, uh, because uh, terminal or contact resistances can be ignored, okay. Uh, but if the resistance itself is small, then contact resistances are not ignorable. So, we may choose P and Q to be of medium value, but R x is of low value, small value. So, therefore, it, it is possible that S is also a low value resistance that is required to get this balance. So, it may happen. that the required 
value of is for balance is also low okay it may or may not happen so it is it may be possible that with a medium value is uh, this quantity p s by q comes out to be uh, uh, of a low value it's then it's fine okay no uh, not much issue but it may happen that this is a so medium by medium it may be a medium value so is we need possibly a small value so that the right hand side is again a small resistance because left hand side is a small resistance so we may or may not or uh, need a small value of s to get this balanced okay okay so let's assume let's assume that the required value of s happens to be small is also small also low thus what we have r x and s these two are low value resistances r x is definitely low value resistances because we are measuring a low value resistance s may or may not be of low value but let's assume this uh, comes out to be of a low value and p and q we have chosen to be to have medium value if so so we have let's draw the four resistances p medium by choice q medium by choice r is low because we are measuring low value resistance we have no choice is uh assume that it also is small now we have to form the bridge by connecting these four resistances with wires and uh, uh, to their terminals so let this be the terminals and we connect these four resistances with wires like this in the form of a square and say then we uh, put the power supply across uh, two opposite terminals maybe this two and say we put the galvanometer or the detector between the other two terminals which is here okay so uh, let or let me just connect this okay fine so i can connect it like this okay now this is a low resistance uh, and this we assume to be low okay these two are medium value resistances therefore the contact resistance due to this terminal which causes some resistances here here etc so this resistance the small resistance can be ignored because p is of much higher value this also can be ignored because p is of much higher value similarly this contact resistances can be ignored because q is of much higher value but here this contact resistances okay cannot be ignored because r and s are small are low value okay so therefore this contact resistance is getting added to this actual value of r and the value of s say if uh now let's take say an example uh say r is 1 ohm small s is 
also one ohm ok and say this this contact resistance here uh, it comes out to be um, say like 0.5 ohm and here uh, it comes out to be so this together everything co uh, contributes to a, a 0.5 ohm resistance in series with R and say here we have a, a 0.1 ohm resistance in series with this ok with S ok. So, this side will have a total resistance of 1.1 ok. So, here 1.1 ohm here we will have 1.5 ohm and say at so so we may get the balance at uh, say with p equals call it uh, 150 ohm and q equals 110 ohm okay so clearly p by so clearly p by q is same as r i mean r plus this quantities so let's write 1.5 by 1.1 so clearly this is the balance condition now the estimated value of r that will be given by what this will be given by p by q multiplied by s the nominal value of p, nominal value of q and the nominal value of s ok. This is the nominal value or the uh, value marked on top of this resistance resistance box ok. So, this will come out to be 1.5 divided sorry uh, 150 p is 150 divided by 110 and the nominal value of s we know the nominal value of S is 1 ohm because we do not know how much these contact resistances are. We have no idea about these contact resistances. These are very, I mean, they can be anything. Uh, we have no control over these contact resistances. We know that the nominal value of S is 1 ohm. We have no idea about any of these contact resistances. So, therefore, so we will put the nominal value which is 1 ohm and this will come out to be 15 by 11. Okay, which is not same as this value of R, which is not same as 1 ohm. And this problem is due to this contact resistances. Okay. Now, these contact resistances do not create a much problem because even if we had added a small quantity to 150 like say 150.5 and say maybe 1. 110.3 the small quantities do not create any problem because the ratio remains almost same. So, this contact resistances uh, beside these medium value resistances they are not of much problem, but this contact resistances are definitely creating problem because this actual value of the resistances they uh, that itself is small r x is small s is small. So, so, a small change will create a large problem ok. So, this is the problem. So, the problem is since r and s are of low value or small value any small uh, addition of contact resistance will create large change in the calculation. Okay. So, that is the problem. 
Now, if there is a problem, there should be a solution too. And the solution is called the Kelvin's double bridge. So, while talking about Kelvin's double bridge, we will uh, divide the talk in two parts. Okay? So, we will first talk about the mathematics behind Kelvin's double bridge. Okay? So, we will first talk about the mathematics or circuit theory or the circuit theory whatever you call of this bridge. And then we will talk in more detail how the effect of contact resistances or terminal resistances are uh, avoid, I mean, are mitigated, okay, or how the problem is problem of contact. Uh, resistance is solved. So, these two topics we will cover uh, while talking about Kelvin's double bridge. So, first the circuit theory, the circuit. Okay. So, the circuit looks like this. Uh, so it has six resistances. Uh, Okay. So, the bridge looks a bit complicated, but once we understand this bridge, uh, the function of each uh, re uh, resistance, then you will see it is not difficult to uh, remember this bridge. But right now, let us uh, start with this circuit being given. Let me call this resistance as P, this as Q, this as R, this as S call this as A, call this as B and call this as C. Okay. So, the power supply is here and the detector is here. So, this is the bridge. Okay. Now, we need to find the balance or null condition of this bridge. Okay. What is the balance condition? when this detector will show zero deflection. To find that, we will apply a star delta conversion in this region here. So, consider this, this delta A, B, C. Consider this delta and we will apply a star delta conversion so, we will make an equivalent star circuit for this. So, let us apply star delta conversion or delta to star in this case, delta to star conversion. Okay. So, what we will have? We will have, uh, let us draw first everything else P, Q, this is P, this is Q, here we have the detector D okay. and then here is the R
the and here is the power supply. So, okay, just one small note at this moment please do not think why is this bridge like this. Do not think about how this bridge is obtained. Focus on the fact that this bridge is given to us and we are finding the balance condition using our knowledge of circuit theory. Okay? Do not uh, concentrate on the question why or how have we got this complicated bridge. Do not go into that question. We will talk about that later when talking about this. Okay? Right now, this is just a straightforward circuit simplification problem. Okay? So, this is the circuit given. We are now to simplify this circuit using a star delta conversion. So, this delta, okay, so this delta part will now become a star So, this is so this A, B and C they are converted into three star connected resistances. This delta becomes this star. Okay. Now, what will be the value of this three resistances? Okay. So, the value of this resistance that means this branch is given by so this is A, this is B. So, if you recall the formula for delta star conversion this is this multiplied by this divided by the sum of this three. Okay? So, this branch will be A B divided by A plus B plus C. So, this will be A B by A plus B plus C. This is this resistance. This resistance will be how much? This is this branch. This will be A C divided by A plus B plus C. So, A C divided by A plus B plus C. What will be this? So, this is this. So, this will be B C divided by A plus B plus C. So, this will be B C divided by A plus B plus C. Okay. And this is S. Okay. So, this is the equivalent circuit. Now, an important fact In this bridge, in this Kelvin doubles bridge, when whenever we change any resistance, so these resistances are variable, so you can change P, you can change Q, all these resistances you can change. Okay? Whenever you change any resistance, change it in a way such that the ratio P by Q is equal to A by B always. So, if you change P without changing Q, that means P by Q is changed, you have to change A or B at the same time, so that P by Q equal to A by B is always true. Okay? So, this is maintained. Okay? So, let me call it while changing any resistance one must ensure this condition. So, if you change P at the same time you have to change A. So, that P by Q is A by B or you can if you change Q you may change B. So, that P by Q is once again A by B. You cannot change only P or only Q without changing A and B. You have to change this together. Okay? So, this is what you have to maintain while using this bridge. So, this is a condition that must be satisfied, that must be maintained. Okay. Now, so this is the equivalent circuit. So, this is the equivalent circuit of this bridge and now you see that 
this bridge looks like a western bridge it has four arms it has so this looks like a western bridge four arm bridge what are these four arms see this is one arm this is another arm and this two together you can think as another arm and this two together you can think as another arm ok 1 2 3 4 so these are the four arms of a four arm bridge we have the detector between two opposite terminals here and here and the power supply between these two terminals. So, this bridge is now equivalent to a four arm bridge and therefore, we can now write the balance condition for this bridge using the balance condition of a Wheatstone bridge which is. So, for this bridge now we can write the balance condition. So, let me come here balance condition we can write this say p by q p by q is equal to this these two together r plus a c by a plus b plus c and these two together s plus so s plus this branch b c by a plus b plus c b c by a plus b plus c ok. So, this is the balance condition of this bridge. So, now, uh, so let us simplify, let us now simplify this equation and uh, for that uh, let us put p by q is equal to a by b from this ok. We can put because we know in this bridge uh, we always maintain the ratio p by q equal to a by b. So, in place of p by q we can write a by b. So, let us write this as a by b is equal to r plus a c by a plus b plus c and here we can write s plus b c by a plus b plus c ok. Now, this will imply. So, let us uh, cross multiply the terms and see what do we get. So, we will get s plus this term a b c by a plus b plus c a b c by a plus b plus c this will be equal to r b multi uh, plus b a c by a plus b plus c b a c by a plus b plus c simply cross multiplication of this with this this and this. Now, these two terms a plus a b c by a plus b plus c and a b c by a plus b plus c we can cancel from both sides. So, then we are left with a s equal to r b or we can write from this a s equal to r b which will imply a by b is equal to r by s ok. okay. Now, okay. And, and we also know that p by q is equal to a by b ok. So, we can write also that p by q is equal to a by b this is maintained this is carefully maintained uh, 
and f by b comes out to be r by s. So, this condition uh, is derived, this part is derived. So, from our derivation. So, this is the balance condition for the this particular bridge Kelvin's double bridge. Okay. So, this is the balance condition. Okay. So, let me write once again P by Q is equal to A by B is equal to R by S for Kelvin's double bridge. So, this is the essential circuit theory of this bridge. Okay. Now, let us see, let us investigate uh, this question, how the effect of contact resistances can be avoided. Okay. So, how to avoid contact resistance problem? We will uh, start by drawing say a Wiston bridge. So, this is a Wiston bridge with call this resistances P Q R S. This is a four arm bridge. Okay. Uh, we can have the detector here and the power supply here. Okay. So, this is a Wiston bridge. Now, say R is unknown and a low resistance R is an unknown low resistance and say the required value of S for the balance is also low. Okay. So, R is unknown required S, required S for balance is uh, also low. P, Q are chosen to be of medium value. Okay. And uh, P, Q is R known and variable. So, R is unknown, P Q is R known and variable and you can uh, choose P and Q to be of medium value and is Suppose it is required S to be small. Okay. So, now this contact resistance is here, this can be ignored, no problem. But to avoid the contact resistances of R and S, let us use, a, use four terminal resistances in, uh, as R and S. So, let us use four terminal resistance. So, 
we will connect it this way. So these are the four terminals. And we will use uh, okay. Now um, let me connect it here. And this here ok so we will essentially use Kelvin's double bridge and so what we will do we will connect two more resistances E and B and this we will sort okay and uh, we'll connect it here Okay. So, we have started with a Wilston bridge and modified that into a Kelvin's double bridge and we are using this as four terminal resistances. So, we are using, so this, this is in a box, this is in a box, four terminals are outside, okay. Now, so, let us name the contacts, uh, these contacts as uh, call this as C1, C2, C3, C4, ok. So, this, this terminal can be connected maybe here or here or maybe at, uh, like this. Uh, then C1, C2, C3, C4, uh, what else? C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11, C12. Now, these are the problematic contact resistances. This may be, uh, this, this can create some problem. Okay. So, now let us analyze what kind of problem can this uh, contact resistances create. Okay. Observe that this C5 and C1, C5, C1 and C2, these are small resistances in series with P. C5, C1, C2, these are small resistances in series with P. So, and P is a medium resistance that is a much higher resistance than this contact resistances. So, this is medium, this is also medium. Therefore, C5, C1 and C2, C5, C1 and C2, can be ignored in comparison with P. 
because these are in series with p and p is of much higher value so even if you add these small resistances to p uh, the ratio say p by q is not going to change p by q or p plus these resistances by q are going to be same so this resistances can be ignored in comparison to p similarly these resistances say c3 c4 and c10 can be ignored in comparison with q q is of a larger value than this contact resistance so you can ignore this thing okay and now then so this this is solved this is solved 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 this is not going to create much problem okay now let's see c7 and c12 okay so let's talk about c7 and c12 c7 and c12 can be thought of uh as a part of internal resistance of the source okay so the source also can have some internal resistance and we know that uh, uh, in our balance condition this resistance uh, doesn't come in the equation so this resistance c7 and c12 we can think as a part of Uh, this source resistance which do not come in the balance equation okay so so they do not uh, so so they do not they do not uh, come in balance equation come in the balance equation Okay. okay now so this is solved this is solved okay c6 and c9 now c6 you can think it is in series with a you can choose a to be of medium value we should choose a to be of medium value and similarly b we should choose to be of medium value so let's write a and b are chosen to be of medium value and such that of course a by b is equal to p by q so this is what we maintain for if we change a we change p if we change b we change we can change q so that this ratio is maintained and a by b a and b are chosen to be of medium value larger value so c6 and c9 can be ignored in comparison to a and b so c6 and c9 can be ignored compared to a and b respectively okay so this is not a problem this is also not a problem so see almost any of this 1 2 3 4 5 6 9 10 7 and 12 they do not create any problem much problem okay 7 and 12 they do not come in the balance equation at all and other resistances they are in series with larger resistances a b p q so they are neglect negligible but c8 and c11 what about them so what about c8 and c11 so c8 and c11 they will have some resistance this resistance call so they will have some resistance call this uh call all these resistances together as c okay so c8 c11 all these contact resistances together you call a one resistance they are in series so you can call them as a common resistance c and you see that this is 
nothing but our Kelvin's double bridge. Let me uh, zoom out and show you the two circuits. So, this is the Kelvin double bridge. We have say you see P Q R S between R and S. We have some unknown. Uh, we have some resistance C. Here also P Q R S between R and S. We have C, and across C we have A B. Across C we have this A B. So these two bridges are exactly same. And then, then in this bridge, when we have derived the balance equation, okay, C doesn't come in picture at all. Whatever the value of C, it doesn't come in the balance equation. Okay, therefore, in this bridge as well, whatever is the value of C eight, C eleven, the contact resistances, they do not come in picture at all. So this uh, C eight and C 11 c8 and c11 do not come in balance equation in the balance equation okay and that is so because uh, because of the principle of this bridge this circuit and this is actually true because we maintain always p by q equal to a by b if we do not maintain this ratio, then C may not get eliminated. Then C may come in the balance equation. But if we maintain this ratio, then C has no effect. And this is how the, the con all contact resistances can be mitigated. So, this is the Houston bridge. And once again, let me repeat before I conclude that. In, so, we, we have so these are four terminal resistances. If we have R and S as small resistance, we must use four terminal resistance. Once again, four terminal resistances are becoming so important, and we have to connect it in this way so that all contact resistances they either go in series with larger resistance and their effect is negligible, or they come in this branch of the Kelvin bridge which does not have any effect in the balance equation. So, this is the beauty of this bridge. So, whoever has thought of this bridge, uh, he might be a genius. Okay? So, he has ignored or uh, he is able to uh, mitigate the effect of all contact resistances by this intelligent connection. You see, this is not a new scientific discovery. This is nothing like E equal to MC square, but this is an intelligent connection of wires so that these contact resistances are carefully avoided. Okay. So, this is the beauty of this engineering. Let me conclude this uh, class just by mentioning one small observation about this circuit. So, if you look at this circuit, okay. so if you look at this circuit, so one small observation these two resistances A and B, they are actually dividing this contact resistance C in the same proportion as A and B. Why? Let us see here. So, after this delta 2 star conversion, the resistance which is uh, here on the left side is a c by a plus b by c and this side is b c by a plus b by c and so, so it is like it is dividing this resistance c, this is c, so this c is divided in the ratio of a by b. So, if you take the ratio of these two, just take the ratio of these two, uh, so see that this ratio a c by a plus b plus c is to this B C by A plus B plus C, this is nothing but A is to B, which is same as P is to Q. Okay. So, in a sense, this, this extra 
bra uh, I mean this 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 is the second bridge that I mean this is why it's called double bridge it has one bridge like this western bridge and another double second bridge which is dividing so this AB is dividing this contact resistance in the same ratio as A is to B. So this part is becoming proportional to A and this part is becoming proportional to B. So this is like a, uh, I often call it a resistance divider. This is my terminology, so like we have potential divider, this is like a resistance divider. So this is dividing this contact resistance C in the same ratio as A is to B. And therefore, the, even in the balance condition P by Q, R by S, same equation is holding true because uh, this extra zero resistance which is due to the contacts terminals which can get either added to R or S, but this is being divided in the same proportion as R and S, therefore the balance equation is not changed okay so this is like a resistance divider thank you